I'm Tony, he's Mike, and we are here to do Little Darlings 1980, starring Tatum O'Neill and Christy McNichol. Tatum O'Neill, the kid from Paper Moon and Bad News Bears, is now more adorable than ever. Look, I don't like sharing this space with you either. You keep out of my way, and I'll keep out of yours. Deal? Isn't she a little darling? And Christy McNichol, everybody's favorite daughter from TV's family. She's sweeter than ever. Slide me something nice. Oh, isn't she a little darling? Both pretty much kind of at the height of their fame. I was... Well, Taylor Neal has been around for a bit by then. She she already did Bad News Bears in 75. And Under a Paper Moon. And Under a Paper Moon, which she won an award won a, for. Won an Academy Award yeah. for. She's the youngest Academy Award yeah. winner for that one. And then uh, Chris Van Nickel was already starting to uh, be a popular TV series called Family from like 1977 to yeah. 79 or something like that. I'm sorry, no, 76 to 80, I think is what it was. Probably. We'll put it here. They're still ascending. I want to say peak, but still ascending. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, yeah, yeah. and I, I'm also going to say this: um, Christine McNichol and Tatum O'Neill, these were America's sweethearts. Oh yeah, they were. And 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 like like the in the biggest possible way. Um, and this is a film that was really against type for them because this was a film that was really geared towards a female audience. It was geared towards a teenage female audience, and it 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 was very honest about that and also very honest about its subject matter and just mm -hmm. to, to cut right to the, the thing these are two girls that are going away to summer camp and there's some you know group of girls there that are like oh you guys are virgins ha 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 so well, they it kind, of, it kind of starts with the with the the, the 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 prissy model bitch i forgot her name but she's got like she's got a boyfriend and they've done it already and we're engaged to be married even though my parents don't know yeah. and all this stuff and are you really engaged yeah, my parents think sending me off to camp will cool it off. They're so provincial. Oh yeah, mine too. So all the other girls on the bus are kind of wrapped up in her fucking bullshit, you yeah, know, kind of yeah. buy along with her, like, oh yeah, we we've, we've had sex and all this stuff, and yeah. blah 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 blah, and and, and then Chris Van Nickel and Tam O'Neill like right off the bat like clash like yeah. immediately. Beat it. No, no, you guys, no, no, don't fight. So well, they're we, kind of driven to clash because well, kind of sort of, but then like the wedge is really driven in yeah. by Queen Bee bitch. Yeah, and that and that's when they get that whole bet going yes. on of you know whoever can lo lose their virginity first. Yes, wins wins her um hundred dollars her, her modeling the payment her her residual from a yes. modeling job that yes. she had plus all the other campers in camp are betting on which team is going to win. I'll bet my residual check for what. Residual check. That Paris will become a woman by the end of the summer. One hundred dollars. Compliments of Tidy Curl. I'm sorry. I don't get this thing. It's a contest. Angel versus Ferris. Whoever loses her virginity first wins. I'll put ten dollars on her. Yeah, me too. <laughs> She's got to be right. Put it down. He has an autograph. Be worth five dollars on the going away. And this also has Matt Dillon in it. And this is a very young. This is Matt Dillon. Shit before the Outsiders. This oh is, yeah. This is like. Is this like one of his first movie roles, or or is this actually his first movie role? I don't know if it's his first movie role, but it's definitely one of the earliest. You can even tell even then, like he's gonna be like you know a, yeah. a seminal bad boy yeah. character. The, the the bad boy with the golden heart. You're drunk. You're cute. Still haven't told me your name yet. Oh yeah? Yeah. It's Randy. Don't let the name fool you. <laughs> and Armand Asante. Yeah. Which you don't uh, know Armand Asante, uh he I know him from Judge Dredd. He plays <laughs> Rico. Which, which funny thing, uh, a little, little, little fact, uh, Armando Santi, one of his first roles was with Stallone in Paradise Island, where he plays Stallone's brother, but yet then later he plays his quote unquote brother Rico in yeah. Judge Dredd. You killed innocent people. The means to an end. You started a massacre. I caused the revolution. You betrayed the law. I was your brother, your blood, your friend. That's your birthright. That's your family. I'm your family. I'm the only family you ever had! Yeah. So. Um, I, I was gonna say, I've seen Armand Asante in a lot of, of films. Uh, he's kind of 
takes any role that has something to bite into on that. And this is like one of the few times that Armando Sante is on film and he doesn't chew the scenery on this one. He plays this very, 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 very subdued. Yes. Very, very subtle. Very, very genuinely and yes. realistically, I guess, is the way that I would phrase that one. Mr. Callahan. What? Can I ask you something personal? Yeah. What sign are you? Is that what you're going to ask me? Yeah. I thought you said you were going to ask me something personal. It is personal. <laughs> and, and this movie, okay, let's just get this one out of the way. This movie is weird in that there's this very meatballs wannabe kind of intro to the film where it's mm -hmm. kind of campy and funny and it's got all these like really terrible jokes that don't land. And that part of this movie is awful. There's, there's no two ways about it. I didn't mind it. But then there's this very emotionally sincere, all these conversations about, about you know, young people and sex and sexuality and, and, you know, when's the appropriate time and how do you know when is that? And all that is, is it's, it's incredibly well written. It's incredibly, amazingly well acted. Oh, yeah. Christy McNichol gives a standout performance in this. And specifically, it's the scene right after she has lost her virginity. Mm -hmm. And and she talks about it, it was not what I was expecting it to be and, and how she feels alone. What did I do wrong? Nothing. It wasn't what I thought it would be. God, it was so personal. Like you could see right through me. Which is contrasted by Tatum O'Neill's character, who actually goes to try and seduce Armand Asante, who's a much older man than her. And mm -hmm. he's in his 20s and she's all of 15. And he flat out rejects her. You see, to you, sex is poetry and phrases and everything you've learned in books, you know. But when you're really in love, I am. Ferris, I'm not a prince. I'm a teacher. Do you know in a year you're going to look at me and you're going to wonder how you could even have thought of loving me? That's not true. Unfortunately, it is. What if next year I came back and I still felt the same way? But she goes back to her cabin and basically lies and says, oh, yes, we made love. And, oh, it was so sweet and sincere. And, and just, just like all this, this, this idealized bullshit mm. yeah. of it. And, and all the girls in her cabin are just eating it up hook, line, and sinker. Did it. Face is all shiny. What happened? Come on, tell, tell us. Come on. Tell us. Come, on. Come, on. come on. He compared us to Romeo and Juliet. <gasps> Romeo and Juliet. Oh, oh my God. God. We had some chilled Chablis and aphrodisiac. I told you about those. Yeah. And, and they're like, oh, yeah, she did. Look, her face is all glowing, all this shit. And then, like, just after she gives her glorious speech of all this shit, uh, Chris Nickel walks in, who had sex. Yes. And just says, no, nah, it didn't happen. No. Nope. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. You, you won fair and square, Tatum O'Neill. I'm sorry. Well, that's breaks. And it's... It's a very powerful scene. It's very for, powerful, For what yes. it is. And, yep. and then you get past that when... when they're no longer at each other's throats. They're no longer in this competition. And then the camp counselor, Armand Asante's character, gets in trouble. Mm -hmm. And basically because, you know, there's a rumor going around camp that he had sex with one of the campers there. And Tatum O'Neill says she's going to go and she's going to tell them that nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem for Queen Bee model bitch because naturally she's going to have lost her bet. Mm -hmm. She's going to have to give the money back. And... She's like, you know, if we just stand together and blah, blah, blah. Well, then all comes out that none of these girls have actually had that. That they're all virgins. Oh, a third virgin. Not quite. Hey, Cinder, you better make that four. Uh, yeah, me too. And so Tatum O'Neill does the right thing. She gets Armand Asante off the hook. And then her and Christy McNichols' character... They actually, you know, she says, yeah, I, I, I did have sex. And, well, why didn't you, you know, win the bet? Because that was, like, the last thing on my mind after that. It was, it was not what it was. It's, it's, 
it's not mean spirited. It's it's no, it's, it's surprisingly not. sincere and sweet Extremely. the conversation between yes. the two of them. Mm-hmm. And then they, you know, camp is over with and they go home for the summer. And when Christy McNichol introduces Tatum O'Neill to her mother and she actually says, this is my best friend. This is my friend, Paris Whitney. My best friend. And there's an earnestness to this. Yeah. There's, a, there's a weird, there's this sincerity to it that like all that shit at the beginning, I could have lived without. But, but I, I didn't mind it because you got to have a little bit of hijinks going on. I mean, it is a teen comedy at a camp. You have to have some hijinks. You have to have some shenanigans. Or, sure. You know, because if it's straight drama, then that in itself is kind of boring and yeah, stuff no, like no, that. You're, you're not wrong, but I'm just going to say that, that the characters themselves seem really undercooked. They seem, uh, anybody other than Christy McNichol and Tatum O'Neill. Well, that's they, by design. I mean, there's like 50 f***ing people in this cast. You can't, <laughs> you can only focus so much on those other characters. I mean, really, the only people really give a shit about is the Queen Bee bitch and like the couple of the other ones. Yeah. Um, which, <laughs> funny enough, uh, I got kicked out of the, uh, the, 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 hippie dip, the hippie girl. Cynthia Nixon. Yes. That, Cynthia Nixon yeah. from Sex and the City. And I think this was actually her first film role, if I'm not mistaken. Probably. I, it's it's but, one of her very early when She yeah. looks all of 12 in this. Yeah. So. And it's funny because she punches out Queen Bee Bitch. <laughs> You're all absolutely trubic. You fraud. In a very hilarious. satisfying way, yes, too. Yes, very satisfying It, it way. didn't feel... See, that now, normally, like, okay, at the end of Cobra, mm-hmm. when, when Cobretti punches out Monty, it's very forced. It's very, ha here's the punchline. Get it? I'm Stallone. This one, however, it felt like she had it coming. Oh, yeah. And, and not only did she have it coming, but the delivery of the punch, it didn't need a zinger. It, it just needed to happen. Yeah. And then she needed to, like, suffer that humiliation. Mm-hmm. But... Um, no, it was really good. Um, the, the, the subject matter is handled extremely well. Yes, yes. Um, very, very tasteful. Um, it's, it's not like, you know, preachy or things no. like that. Um, I mean, sometimes it, it's, it comes off very heavy, but in the appropriate amount. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's heavy when they're dealing with the yeah. subject in a heavy manner. Yeah, yeah. Um, and... and Respectably, it's it's weird in that you could tell that those portions of the script they slaved over. You could tell that they honed those portions of the script yeah. and got it exactly yeah. right, said exactly what they wanted to say, well, exactly how they wanted well, to say it. Well, here's the other thing too: the, the script was written by two women, so okay. so I could kind of get how like that portion lands very well, but yeah. then the the more hijinks stuff, maybe not quite so much because they're not. So, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're not they're comedians. They're not, yeah, yeah, they're not yeah, comedians they're, they're, and yeah. stuff like that. But so. it almost felt like they did a movie, they gave it to the studio, and the studio said, hey, Meatballs was a huge hit. We need some of that in there. And that's that's kind of how it felt to me, especially mm-hmm. the whole beginning, because it's, it's hitting all those same beats where mm-hmm. they get together and they're getting on the bus at the same time, and it's the rich kids mm-hmm. and the poor kid, and, you know, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. So I, I, I kind of, from a time capsule standpoint, I get it i get the mm-hmm. inspirations and the things that influence this film but at the end of the day this film does stand on its own it's just that it could have been better if they hadn't tried to imitate those other films i think if they just had like somebody help punch up those things you know dub, yeah just, you know script doctor a little bit for those parts if they if they were came you know come across lacking would, yeah would have yeah. helped um because again i didn't mind them they're they're fine with me they don't ruin um, the movie. No, I just no, want to say this. Yeah, they don't so. ruin the movie, but they do. They, it's tonally inconsistent is, is really what it boils down to because the characters don't feel like It's not inconsistent. It's just they're not as well done as the heavy dramatic parts. So, so it feels very inconsistent. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so fair so, enough. So um, I will say that uh, this is an interesting little tidbit was Chris McNichol actually had the pick of the role. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not surprised she picked that angel part, but... I think uh, Tame O'Neill very well could have done that role as well. Because she did the same thing in Bad News Bears. She was that character in Bad yes. News Bears, yes. except for she was 12 or 10 or whatever. Or was it 11? I, 11 yeah, 11 or 12. 11 yeah. or something yeah. like that, her character in, in, in Bad News Bears. Yeah. She plays that rough, you know, rough exterior, but the heart of gold yeah. inside and stuff yeah. like and, that. And like, perfectly. Yeah. She, she, she's she's yeah. kind of lonely. She's looking for yeah. friends. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, and... and 
you're absolutely right. Tatum O'Neill most definitely could have picked either or. Kristen McNichol could have picked either or. I know that the biggest part of this budget was their paychecks Probably. for the most part. And then, um, I, I mean, there's a, there's a plethora of talent peppered throughout this film. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll catch a bunch of actresses uh, uh, in roles that you'll be like, oh, I know that one, I know that one, I know that one. Mm-hmm. You may not know their names, but you'll be, you know, th- 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 that lady from that thing is <laughs> what it really boils down to. Yeah. But um, So what, one other thing, too, I because after watching this, I had to get, like, some other, some women's perspective on this. Mm-hmm. It was really tough to do, actually. Yeah. Because, like, uh, I, you know, I talked to, like, my sister, uh, a friend at work, my buddy Michelle, my buddy Misty, and none of them have actually seen this movie, or if they have seen it, it was just bits and pieces. Ah. You know? And so I'm, like, trying to describe the story and the plot and stuff like that, and it's like, mm-hmm. so how accurate is this stuff? And they're like, well, from what you're describing, the way, the way these girls act, it's pretty... Pretty accurate, so, you know. Um, it all just kind of boiled down to really like, you know, um, j- just like in, in in this movie, you know, um, you know, some some girls would brag about their exploits. Some would just say they did shit just to kind of feel like they're part of that group. Yeah, yeah. And then the other and the other people were just like, you know what? No, I'm I'm gonna be straight up. I'm I'm virgin. I've never done any of this yeah. stuff. You and know? naturally, so, they're ridiculed yeah. and made fun of. Yeah. And and but but the funny thing is, is like. It's really not too much different than, than guys, you know. Guys are the same f- thing for that age. Which you know, I, we, you know, if we got some, we bragged about. If we did get some, we lied about it yeah, or bullshit about it. Yeah, <laughs> got some. And once a many guys actually show up and say, you know, yeah, I'm still a virgin. That didn't happen too terribly often. <laughs> well, you know, the the other thing is is that they get the the in crowds right yeah. on this one. They get the peer pressure portion yeah. of it right and, and that's, the peer pressure. that's universal yeah. on this one um and um there's also that like that drive like that 14 15 year old that like need to to come off as more grown up than you actually yes. are and yep. this film nails that in spades mm-hmm. how they're all trying to out adult each other yeah. because Kristen <laughs> mcnichol is smoking like a chimney through the entire <laughs> film and so is matt dillon and um matt dillon's character is is really artfully handled at no point does he come off as an asshole no and yet he could have in, oh, the, yeah. in the hands of a, a less gifted actor the other thing is is that after after you know he finds out that it was a bet that and that's the reason why they had slept together he goes to her and he's trying to like reconcile this like you know hey can't we just start over and she's like we're we're past that how, how do we start over let's give it another shot huh angel it's too late we started in the middle. We never even had a beginning. We could try. We won't even have to see each other if you don't want to. Just, just talk or something. Why not? Because it wouldn't, wouldn't be enough. Which is a very grown-up response to a very weird situation. Yeah. And that's one of the few things that actually didn't ring true to me, because, like, that's a little, almost a little too adult. I think for, that was for, the... For reaction of, of a 15-year-old. Um, I think that was the point, though. Was, was yeah, that, but, but I, I, I don't... I, it, 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 to me, it, doesn't, it rings false. So, I, to see, to, for me, it rang true because at the end of the day, when Christy McNichol sees her mom again mm-hmm. for the first time, she basically tells her, look, mom, you're, you, you're involved with losers. You've been dating <laughs> all these losers. Uh-huh. It's time for you to, to stop that and, and yeah. you know, start, start taking your relationship. And the reason for that is because she had actually experienced what it was like to just be used for sex. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Well, she wasn't used for sex. She used Matt Dillon for sex. She, just, well, just, she, just, just, she, just, just to be clear about this I one. I was going to say, she was used for sex, but not by Matt Dillon, by Queen Bee Bitch. So, there you go. in a very All different right. way. Yeah. So, yeah. But so. I, I would most definitely recommend this movie. Mm-hmm. Sit through. If the first 15, 20 minutes of it is not working for you, sit tight. It gets really, really good. Uh, and it's really, really honest. And this is just more proof that we had more respect for teenagers in the 70s and 80s than we do now because there is nothing Disney about this. There is no, no. saccharin. There is no sugar coating. This is very raw, very real, very in your face. And and, and again, it, it it comes off as as, as honest, sincere. Yeah. So, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I, I may not buy this, but I would definitely watch this again. 
Yeah, it's, it's a total recommend for me too. Uh, am I gonna buy it? No, absolutely not. Um, but yeah, if you got teenage daughters or children or whatever, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a like you said, it's a good honest watch and it's a good honest portrayal. I think of um, the teen years. The teen years, yeah. Yeah. So. so. That's all, yeah, that's all we got this time, so we will catch you next time. Until then, throw up the devil horns, Mike. <laughs>